Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about Flowcode version 10, which has recently been launched. Some of the exciting things about Flowcode 10 is that all components are now free. This is great news. It means that um, a lot of users will be able to use all of the features of Flowcode completely for free. So if we look on the main website, flocker.co.uk, we see some of the new features. So we've got licensing changes. Flocker is free for makers and hobbyists with full functionality for a limited range of chips. So some of the free chips are the Arduino, Arduino Uno, the Nano, um, a PIC, and up to 70 more devices. Professional users get commercial code rights, priority support for the forums. So supposedly this is if you buy the professional license and here we have the academic license. We now have dedicated 2D component panels. That's very nice. And look, it looks like you can have multiple different panels. That's very interesting. If we click on here, I think it takes you and shows you which chips are actually included in this free version. So here we have the Arduino AVRs, we have some of the microchip devices, some Raspberry Pi devices, that's nice, some ESP32s, and then some of the matrix hardware. So, so that's a nice offering, um, considering that the only restriction in the software now is the chips and the pro features. So here are some of the pro features. So enhanced technical support, additional component features. So we can we can now step into components. We can view component code directly. So presumably, when you've got a project and you've got components, you can actually go into the component macros during simulation. Component connection lists and component debugger. Additional tools. User interface tree customization, inbuilt to do list. That's a nice, nice feature. Separate C and H file generation, variables on simulation, and customization of the C code of flowchart icons. So some nice professional features, but it looks like the free offering is very, um, very usable. So let's look at the software itself. Here we have um, a, a new copy of version 10 ready to go. Um, so let's start a new project. Let's look at the free targets. So there's a nice list of free targets here. We've still got uh, our templates. We've still got App Developer. So I believe App Developer is also completely free, um, which again is absolutely fantastic news. It means that we can create an embedded we can create an embedded project, we can create firmware for a piece of hardware, and then we can have um, an app developer project to go with it, either to test the embedded device or to get, roll out to our users and, and give out a, a Windows software that can work with our embedded device. So let's look at one of the free targets. I'm going to choose an ESP. 32, room 32. Let's start a new project. So again we have our project explorer. It looks like there's a few new tabs on here now. So we've got um, icons. So these are command icons which again are, are also up here. We have IO port and pins. That's nice. So we can directly uh, reference our pins. We've got panels, panels menu. So as we add presumably more of these panels, uh, we can select which panels are, are, are being shown here. We've got our global variables, which now shows you the value here, presumably in real time. So as your simulation's running, you should be able to see these values updating. We've got our, um, our macros, We've got components, so let's try and add a component to the project. Let's have something like um, a 
big display. So the displays are looking a bit nicer. Let's try connecting something to our display. So let's have a, maybe a, um, a touch screen. And we link that here, oh, that's nice. And then here on our Project Explorer we've got the macros for our various hardware. So we can initialize the display, let's initialize the touch panel. Let's have a loop. Let's sample the touchscreen sensor and store that into a new variable. We'll call that touch. Say if if touch, then we're going to read the coordinates. So coordinate so zero is x. And presumably index. So it looks like it's a multi-point um, touch component. This. So let's add some new variables. Let's have an x and y. So x and y is coordinate one. And then let's draw a circle at x. And y radius of five. Let's not make it transparent and let's make it solid. Okay. So let's look at this. Well it looks like we're inverted. Let's see if we can fix that. So flip y. And it hasn't solved it. Interesting. Let's flip that way. Hmm. Still promising. Hmm. So let's have a look at the help. Here we have a help window. So for every component, there is help available, which sometimes has examples, but What's also nice is in Flutter 10, we also have access to the source code for all of the components. So we can either view the source code online or we can download it. So let's have a look at the source code. Let's save it on my desktop. Yep, I'm going to launch the file now. Typically, it's appearing on one of my other monitors. So let's just wait, wait for that to load. Looks like it's quite a big project. Here we go. So here's all of the code behind that component. Excellent. So that's a really nice change, being able to take the source code for a component and tweak it as needed or even base other components off, off this source code repository. Excellent. Okay, so what else is new? Let's have a look. Build looks largely the same. Again, we've got our library update system, so we can look for all of the updates that have happened since the last version. That's interesting. Hmm, looks like there might be a problem with the. Uh, Maybe I'm not on the latest version actually. I might not be, be on the latest. Um, I think when you start Flocker, there's a pop up down here. 
that says there's new version available. Um, so that might be why the updates aren't working there. Let's look at licensing. So you can see I've I've got the professional ten user account. View. Um, That's a nice feature. Shows you all the different packs that are available. Two D panels. So let's see about stepping into one of these component macros. So if we step into and let's go into this initialize function. Step into. Hmm. Maybe we have to turn that feature on. Let's have a look. Uh, let's stop the simulation and go global settings. Seeing anything to allow me to go in. This user tools looks new. I wonder if we could use this to do some sort of Git um, integration. We'll have to have a play with that. Um, I'm not seeing how we. So show forms in an external browser, that's nice. Um, no, it's um, it's not jumping out at me. Unless we just do it here. Oh, ah, there we go. So we can see it here. So we've got the initialize function there. Can we set a breakpoint in here? No, we can't set a breakpoint. Hmm. Step into initialize. I wonder if we can step into individual macros. That might be quite nice. So let's see. Let's have a test macro and then that, let's just put a stop the simulation. Let's put a calculation icon. Let's add a breakpoint. So debug run run test. Ah nice. So we can actually make the simulation just run inside a single macro. That's a very nice uh, new feature. Excellent. What else have we got here then? Let's have a look at App Developer and see what if there's anything new there. So component libraries. There's maybe a bit more, there's certainly a lot more order to things in here. DSP, they look nice. And if they have this, yeah, have this um, bendy line, that's nice. We have some comms, we've got API. An API library. Oh, nice. So this must be all of the components we can talk to virtually. Um, 
via an API target. So these are various connections to real world hardware. So like say we have an ESP32. There's there's um, if we go to help. There's firmware available here that you would load onto your ESP32. And then let's bring that on. And then there's macros that allow us to talk to that firmware and control it. But also this has a number of IO, some PWM, it's got two I2C, two SPI and two UARTs and one one wire. And so presumably, any of these that have I2C, SPI, UART, one wire access, we can use and we can connect them to this. So let's try an IO expander. We want the API to be, aha, ESP32, so we've got channel 0 or channel 1. It's connected to channel zero. It's interesting it's not drawn the connection. And very nice. So now presumably we can we can control one of these from within our app developer environment via um, via the Wi-Fi. So that's very nice. Excellent. Well, this video is probably getting long enough. Um, as I say, Flockard 10 is just being released. Um, it's been out for a couple of months now. It's already had two fairly major updates in that time. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to be having to play with this and the free features. Ooh, create web applications. Ah, oh, coming soon. Well, this looks uh, exciting. HTML export allows you to create control and data gathering projects. The function on any browser on any platform. Interesting. Well, I look forward to that then. Maybe we could do a future video exploring that. Okay. All right, I've been Ben Rowland. Many thanks for watching. And if you like the look of this, then please uh, feel free to have a download and a play yourself. Okay, many thanks. Bye bye.